It's just absurd to think that 13 year olds are not having sex and they're not pursuing it in a very deliberate, knowing way. It's absurd. <laughs> Thirty-five-year-old teacher who had sex with a thirteen-year-old sixth grader sentenced to eighty. Mary Kay Letourneau, the last person you would suspect of being a molester of children. In a plea deal, she admitted raping a thirteen-year-old and was sentenced to seven and a half years in jail. Go to your nearest Google search engine, type in "teachers who've slept with their students," and what results is. Essentially the reason I feel ashamed on behalf of my gender. It's pages and pages of these horrifically long lists of names that continues on and on and on. Now and then there are exceptions, but for the most part, yes, the predators are usually grown women and their victims are usually drawn from a pool of young boys they teach or coach. To me, it's an interesting yet sad new phenomenon. And having said this, however, I do vaguely remember a time way before this was a thing when if someone brought up the subject, I think one name and one name only would be apt to pop into my head, and that name would be Mary K. Letourneau. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there were predators within the school system long before her, but she was like the first one to really make waves and headlines with her relationship with a little boy named Billy. In all honesty, Mary K. Letourneau's name, her story, was the only one I knew about, and the only one I knew about for a really long time. Mary Kay Letourneau. Her name is known to everyone. Mary Kay Letourneau made world news when she seduced her 12-year-old student. She really believed she had committed no crime. The court hearing made international news. It's the scandal that shocked the nation. The tabloids couldn't get enough of it. Even now, some two decades later, you can't help but ask, what was she thinking? In the process of digging up old footage, old interviews, and all that, I started to see that I wasn't the only one. I.e., this wasn't my doing, and Letourneau wasn't my creation. This was the result of the massive media coverage and her widespread media presence. In essence, Mary Kay Letourneau had been born by the media. And I guess what I was originally getting at is just that whatever their reasons why, they just sensationalized the crap out of her. Movies were made out of her story, books were written, and people actively followed her story. Mary Kay Letourneau was a household name. Somewhere, somebody was counting the days and the hours until her release. And Mary Kay Letourneau, whether or not she was the first, she set a precedent of sorts, or maybe quite a few of them. In fact, you could call her the godmother of female teacher predators. She not only paved the way, but she also went and ensured that should anyone attempt to follow after her and try to match her notoriety, well, she made sure her story would be one seriously hard act to follow. And then, of course, there was Billy. A nation and beyond would watch as he was just thrust into the world of fatherhood when he himself was still practically a baby. And then as a country, we watched him come of age, which was also weird, I must say. Collectively, the world would sit and collectively scratch our heads to hear him announce that he still loved her, and later that they were even getting married. It was just incredible, I guess. And I guess no matter what, in the end, you just have to admit that this was a relationship that defied all odds at every twist and turn. So with all that said, I just thought that today, why not, let's take a trip back just a little bit to look at this bizarre and evidently timeless case. Everyone, allow me to introduce Mary Kay Letourneau. Mary said it was true love, but no one else saw it that way. She was jailed twice and even had two children to the underage Villy. Villy is now her husband. What you will have to decide tonight is whether this case amounts to a love story or whether this is one of the most extraordinary, prolonged cases of child abuse we have known. Was it right? Was it wrong? Um, I don't know. Twenty years later, people are still talking about this. Some people think it was just a relationship, while others think it was the rape of a child. Prior to the year of 1996, Mary Kay Letourneau was a 34-year-old married woman with four children. She was also a school teacher who taught various grades at Shorewood Elementary in a suburb of Seattle, Washington. It was in a second grade class at Shorewood Elementary that Mary Kay would first lay eyes on a little boy by the name of Billy Falau. 
She would later end up teaching his sixth grade class as well. And it was during the latter of these two years in 1996 that Mary would fall head over heels in love with the impressionable young student who couldn't help but just steal her girlish heart. Naturally, with Billy being a minor, and of such a young age too, great controversy would come to surround the case of these two most unlikely lovebirds. But first, how did these two get together in the first place? How in the world did their relationship ever cross over from a teacher-student relationship to that of lovers? At the time Mary was consummating what she called her real love for Billy, she was also living at home with her husband, Steve raising their four children. It was reported that despite being married with children, Mary was never truly in love with her first husband, Steve Letourneau, and that their marriage was not a happy one. Both Steve and Mary were allegedly unfaithful to one another, and they argued frequently about their financial problems. Mary began forging a relationship with Billy, platonic at first, outside of class. And when her marriage hit the rocks, it was her 12-year-old student that Mary would use as her shoulder to cry on. Over time, the pair would grow more and more attached, and boundaries would become blurred, but with Mary as if failing to see or acknowledge the age gap that existed glaringly between the two. Before long, Mary started to look at her favorite preteen pupil in an entirely new light. And meanwhile, Billy had been dared by a buddy to attempt to bend the often childlike yet nonetheless off-limits Letourneau. Not being the one to shrink from a challenge, Billy and Mary would consummate their relationship while both attending a school-sponsored summer camp during the summer of 96. Mary was an adult, a 34-year-old teacher when she first began her affair with 12-year-old Billy. Acting on a dare, 12-year-old Billy made his move during summer school. We went outside and... Uh... We went on top of her roof and we had, we had sex. On the roof? Yeah. As witnesses would later report, the relationship between the student-teacher pair had graduated to become intensely supersexual. At the time, Mary was nearing her mid-30s while Billy was only 12. After this, a series of questionable incidents would start to take place. At first, even when the two were caught together in potentially uncompromising situations, anyone in the community had a hard time believing that Mary, who came across as everything just short of a saint, would ever be capable of doing anything remotely untoward. Finally, after discovering a handful of sexually explicit letters Mary had written to the underage boy, her own husband Steve would be forced to deal with the fact that his worst suspicions had just been confirmed. Steve would proceed to leave Mary and then one of his relatives would phone the school and inform them of Mary's affair with the sixth grade boy. The chatter that would spread around town as the result of this tip would alert authorities enough so as to lead to Mrs. Letourneau's arrest in March of 1997. She was still married and living with her husband, Steve Letourneau, and their four children. Then he discovered dozens of notes and letters that confirmed his wife was in a sexual relationship with Billy. Soon after, a relative of Steve's reported Mary's affair with Billy to her school district. In March 1997, she was arrested and charged with child rape. These violations are profoundly disturbing. In spite of this entire mess, instead of cutting her losses as most ordinary people might do and walking away perhaps thinking, whoa, now this was way more than I bargained for here, this teacher-student fling is definitely not going to be worth it in the long run, and walking away, instead, the turno's libido serving to prove itself irrepressible, it was while she awaited her sentencing that she gave birth to her and Billy's first child that May of 97. One thing to note here, it would be later in 1999 that Mary's divorce with Steve would be final and custody of their four children would be awarded to the biological father and rightful guardian, Steve. But back to Mary's shenanigans. Thanks to the aforementioned plea bargain, Mary's sentence would end up greatly reduced. Instead of the seven and a half years that prosecutors had originally intended to seek, Mary would end up serving a reduced sentence of six months out of which three were suspended. Then, even though she would not have to register as a sex offender upon her release, the turtle was nonetheless required to undergo three years of sex offender classes. She was also not, under any circumstances, to have any contact with Billy, and nor was she to have contact with any minors. 
It was around this time that Letourneur's scandalous story hit the tabloids hard. As this snippet of courtroom video shows, you can tell by her scandalous little smirk that even Mary, who had been previously confused by legal matters, knew she was getting off with a slap on the wrist, more or less. But even that fact should have been enough to make Mary seriously think about the mistakes that had brought her to face criminal charges and the threat of a long jail sentence in the first place, one would think. Mary Kay Letourneau, however, seemed to be of a new breed, and she marched to the beat of her own strange drum, because in spite of the media spotlight and everything else going on in their now-turned-upside-down lives, Billy and Letourneau continued to see each other, regardless of the no-contact order. This decision that is to violate the court order would eventually be the thing that would send her to prison and this time around for a much longer duration of time. Specifically, February 1998, after the two star-crossed lovers were caught spending time together, the judge would revoke the previous plea agreement and reinstate Letourneau's initial sentence of seven and a half years. While serving out the sentence, again, while incarcerated for crimes against a minor, in October 1998, the seemingly insatiable Interno gave birth to Billy's second daughter. Finally, in 2004, Mary Letourneau was released from prison. From that day forward, she would be forced to register as a level two sex offender. After serving the full seven years, Mary was released in August of 2004. Accompanied by a swarm of journalists, she registered as required by law as a sex offender. A no-contact order also remained in place between Letourneau and Billy, who was now 21 years old. What is the most remarkable about the story to me is in fact what happened after Letourneau was released from prison following the second longer stint. One would imagine that Billy, a 21-year-old young man, would quite likely have moved on from not just his relationship in contact with Letourneau, but also from having any real desire to be with her. One would imagine he'd have taken an interest in other girls girls closer to his own age, and discarded his relationship with the now middle-aged Letourneau, citing it perhaps as a mistake he had made as a naive and impressionable young child. Well, as Billy would later divulge in a much, much later interview, he had in fact dated other women while Mary was serving her time, this being as per an agreement that he and Mary had purportedly arrived at. While Mary doesn't quite seem to recall this agreement ever existing, and whether or not Billy did take the opportunity to say, maybe, so some of his wild oats, one important fact alone remains. In the end, it was still Mary that Billy would be found dutifully awaiting and professing his undying love for. What are your feelings for Mary Kay now? I love her. I love her with all my heart. And there'll never ever be another person like her. In fact, immediately upon Letourneau's release, to everybody's dismay, Billy went to petition the court that his no-contact order with the naughty ex-school teacher be revoked seeing now that he was 21, and presumably should be allowed to make his own decisions regarding whom to see and whom not to see. The court approved this, seeing it to that the enduring couple's wish be granted. What Mary and Billy did next would see their personal lives hurled out into the media spotlight yet again, and possibly like never before. Because next, Mary and Billy decided to rather publicly tie the knot. Whether they did it strictly for themselves, or else whether they intended it as a statement to the world that here we are, we're in love, so everybody back off now. It was in May of 2005 that the former elementary school teacher and the boy she once taught phonics to exchanged vows in front of a worldwide audience of odd and incredulous observers. Of course, if it had ever been their hope that the public would back off and leave them to be to live their own lives, that hope would shatter like a porcelain doll thrown out of a 13-story building. Because it shouldn't have been surprising, this latest development in their already sensational, scandalous story drew in the attention on a largely unprecedented scale. The now Mr. and Mrs. Billy and Mary Kay Letourneau Falau, it appears, decided to do what they could with this predicament, and they took on TV appearances by the handfuls. In addition to wanting the public to know how very much truly in love they were, Billy would also go on interviews, it seemed, in some attempt to clear Mary's name. He would repeatedly find himself telling the world that this was not the case of a young and impressionable youth being groomed and brainwashed by a perverted older adult. And in fact, it seemed almost as if they would go on to spend the rest of their relationship, more or less, attempting to convince the world that their love was real. And true to their word, as much as they could be, in the end, they would go on to endure as a couple for a remarkable 12 plus more years to follow. It was at last in 2019 that Billy would file for a legal separation from Letourneau. According to a source close to Billy, it was claimed that after all the years Billy spent trying to assure everyone 
that he was not a victim. Billy was now seeing things clearly, and he now understood that his relationship with Laterno was neither a healthy nor a normal relationship from the very start. Then approximately one year after his filing, Mary Kay Laterno Falau made major international headlines for what might very well have been her very last time. Because on June 6, 2020, Mary lost her battle with colon cancer, and she passed away. And it is said that Billy, proving himself loyal to the very end, was right by Mary's side during her final days, even in spite of their divorce. What was likely the time she had needed him most of all? Her former student, Billy, had shown himself to have transformed into rather the stand-up man. Letourneau, who was just 58 at the time of her death, is reported to have left much of her estate to Billy. I did say it every morning when they left. I'll probably cry right now. It's like, <laughs> I love you now. Go and do the right thing. And it's like... It it's still like, makes you yeah. emotional even now to think about that. Yeah, I love you now. Go and do the right thing. It's like, what else matters? Did you do the right thing? You know what? I'm not going to continue with you trying to have me answer that question. It doesn't even matter. What else matters? So, there's a lot. There's a lot here. There's a lot to be discussed, but just the one thing that I kind of kind of popped up for me. First, they forged a platonic relationship, a friendship, if you will, like as if, you know, a 30-something-year-old teacher and a sixth grader can have an actual friendship. You know, that's just wrong. Um, I feel it's wrong. I don't know. Um, it's just, it just doesn't, it gives me the creeps. Especially if you have kids, dude. Like, Mary Kay had kids. She had four other kids. Can she, can she, doesn't she see Billy as what she would see one of her children? But anyway, they started, they began by forging a platonic relationship um, at first, a friendship. Um, and then, and then when her marriage, like I said, when it hit the rocks, who was there for Mary? Who did Mary turn to? Billy. And that's like a trick that people use. That's like, see, basically, at this point, it's like you gotta wonder, is she grooming him here or not? I mean, how does she find it so naturally to know exactly what to do with a kid that she's trying to seduce? Oh. Um, he was supposedly like her first one. It, her first, you know, kid that she seduced. Um, it was supposedly true love and to its credit it did go on to last until right before she died but um but yet it reeks of grooming behavior i mean hand me a sixth grader i wouldn't know what the bleep to do but something about the stuff she was doing just feels like she was operating on, off of some weird natural instinct that's kind of the only thing i really really wanted to add my opinion on um everything else i think it is what it is you know what do you do? Do I think that perhaps she paved the road for other people to do the same thing? I mean, I think that people that do this have a predisposition for doing it. Just because someone did it before. Well, I think to an extent, yeah, you can you could kind of say, well, someone did it before, so that makes it more okay. If I do it now, I won't be seen as such like a mega freak. But yet, little do they know that I, I yeah, you are. Really? How does this junk happen? I mean, I, I read some of these other stories and it's just how does this stuff happen? Anyway, I will be covering those other stories. Some of them, not all of them, of course. There's way too many and they never end. Um, but I will be covering some of them in a future video. That's it for this one. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's taught you something new. If you have no idea who Mary Kay Letourneau even it was, um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I, I, I can't wait uh, to see you all back next time. Um, have a great rest of your day, have, have a beautiful week and all that. Um, did I just say beautiful? I just said beautiful. Are you still in love? I'll say yes. Whew. Who was the boss? I don't know what was his name. Who was the boss? What? Who was the boss back then? You know, then? there was me pursuing you. But... Who was the boss back then? <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, this who is was? Ridiculous. Who was? Just say. Just say? Who was the boss? All I knew was what I knew back then. But who was the boss? He was 13, Mary. But who was the boss? This is getting weird. Who was the boss? Who? In pursuing the relationship. Who was the boss? 
Well, I was the pursuer. Yes. Mary, even as you're But hearing this now, come on, he was 13. It doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. Oh, well, flaw me. I did the yeah. best I could. I mean... Uh, flaw me, character flaw. Ooh. I've learned that regretful is actually a bad thing, to regret anything. You know, everything that's already happened was already meant to be. So I think about it, you know, like, could I have ever done that? Could I have ever been with a girl that's 13 years old right now? And I, I, I just can't see myself doing it. As a 35-year-old man now, to look back at your 13-year-old self and to give him advice as a man, <laughs> what would you say? Don't do it. 